Oh, him? Yeah. I know him. It's going to take a while. It happened years ago. Did you know there are three kind of aces? Those who seek strength, those who live for pride, and those who can read the tide of battle. Those are the three. And him? He was a true ace. He was a fighter pilot they called Solo Wing Pixie. He was a colleague of the man I seek. Ten years ago, there was a war that engulfed the world. The Belkin War. And in that war was a pilot who trailed across the sky and disappeared from history. He was a lone mercenary who inspired both fear and admiration. He is the man I seek. And so, with the words of Solo Wing, the curtain rises. It was a cold and snowy day. Rot Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 2nd Air Division, 52nd Tactical Fighter Squadron, Detlef Fleischer, also known as the Red Swallow. With his skill and demeanor, he was practically a poster boy for the armed forces. Today, he is a professor of history at the University of Dinsmark. Back then, I was bursting with pride. I wanted to lead us to victory, for Belka's honor. Staying where it was nice and warm wouldn't accomplish anything. My flight's mission was to maintain air superiority in area B7R, an essential area that we couldn't allow to be violated. That day, when I heard the order from HQ for reinforcements, I became angry. The station force was in chaos because of just two mercenaries. There was no way the mighty Belkin Air Force could lose to mere mercenaries. My pride was shot, and the round table was defiled. What went wrong? Whatever it may be, the fact remains I was forced to walk a different path in life than the one I had envisioned. A nation is comprised of the individuals who live in its borders. It can only become a nation when it is supported by those individuals. But mercenaries who cross lines in allegiance for money have no country to protect. They only fight for their own power and fame. But if that was the case, then why did I lose to him? Maybe not having the burden of a nation allows you to fly faster. Bernard Schmidt, a man with the eyes of an owl. Groom Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force. 10th Air Division, 8th Tactical Fighter Squadron. Fighting with distinguished service on the battlefield, he earned the title of Ace with his uncanny ability to adapt quickly to the flow of battle. Oh, I had a bad feeling while I was flying towards the round table. Why were they having problems down in two mercenaries? I figured it was just temporary chaos and it'd be over by the time I got there. Pilots of the Belkin Air Force are true professionals, but when I saw the situation, I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought maybe my IFF was malfunctioning. There were still two enemies on the radar. Everyone else in my squadron had the same reaction. This is really happening. Every now and then, guys like that appear on a battlefield. Someone special, you know? I squint in my eyes and confirm the situation. Check the terrain, air currents, his plane, his maneuvers, and his remaining ammo. I figured I could do it. I knew what I was getting into, but he still outmaneuvered me beyond my expectation. War is something fought on the desk of politicians. As long as they win in the end, that's all that matters. But for us, it's a matter of survival. In order to survive, you need to analyze the situation in an instant. It's the same as living in a city. The rules of this little city apply just as well to that wide open sky. That guy had the same feel about him as this city.
Indigo Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 7th Air Division, 51st Tactical Fighter Squadron, Dimitri Heinrich, an ace whose precision and grace in flying earned him the title of Blue Heron. Today he has his hands full with the family business. Well, that day, right before I deployed, my airspace assignment was changed. Initially, my squadron was assigned to the Stable Eastern Front. That was changed to Area B7R, the round table where casualties were recorded at a fearsome pace. It's also the place where I met him. It was just two planes, him and an eagle. And yet our lead force didn't stand a chance against them. I could tell he was good, and it was going to be bad for us. But there was something else I noticed. He hesitated. A vulnerability that can be exploited. I was certain I would win. The pilot was still young. He had yet to master the rules of combat. But in the end, I was shot down. I fly under the code of knighthood. It's no surprise, since we soldiers are the descendants of the Belkin Knights. We protect the meek and give our lives for honor, but that does not mean that we are generous, since generosity will cost us our lives. If the pilot survived to the end of the war, he must have carried out these rules. Gelb Teams Number 2, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 5th Air Division, 23rd Tactical Fighter Squadron, Rainer Altman. He flew the skies of Directus during the capital's liberation, and he's still there to this day. I met him above this very sky. I can still hear the sound of the missile alerts from that day. I received an order to fly to Directus on my way back from an intercept mission on the southern defense line. The order itself wasn't unusual. We kept being deployed from one mission to the next without receiving even the basic maintenance. But the situation was the same all around. We were late reaching the operational space. The station squadrons had already retreated and warning bells were going off in the city. And the people were looking up to his plane, high above the sky. He pursued me relentlessly. As soon as I thought I'd shook him off, there he was again. The never-ending sound of the missile alerts put fear in my heart for the first time. It felt like he could see right through me. He was always one step ahead of me. He matched every combat maneuver I made until I used up every trick in the book. I, I couldn't see any emotion in his maneuvers. I didn't feel like I was fighting against a human being. I wanted to end that battle as quickly as possible. I bailed out and landed here. The captain was gone. I've lived a comfortable life since then. And I probably have him to thank for that. They ring the bells here at dusk to honor the liberation of the capital. It signals peace, but to me, they are the sounds of death. This man was head of the command group, and was known as the Vulture. Schwartz team commander, Dominik Zuboff, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 13th Night Fighter Air Division, 6th Tactical Fighter Squadron. He fled after the final battle in order to avoid prosecution for various war crimes. He is still on the run, and being hunted as an escaped killer. Sorry about the accommodations. Goes with the business. I'm not active during the day. 
Back then, I was a shadow assassin, an escapee killer. Given the order, I'd even shoot down my own comrades. I received an order to take down deserting craft on that day. It was a typical assignment. But something unexpected happened. My target was no new recruit, but a top ace of the Belkin Air Force. And he just had to go and run straight into the chaos at the round table. The man was sharp, just like the rumors. But that wasn't the problem. The problem was that the mercenary team of Solo Wing and him were there. Thanks to them, I lost my target. I figured the least I could do was take them down in return. Of course, that was where my luck ran out. Is the man still alive? Though I guess it's hard for bad guys like us to die. The real heroes always manage to die first. But guys like him, Solo Wing, and me, we live the rest of our lives in hell. But then again, being alive is proof that we were good. Shnee Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 22nd Air Division, 4th Tactical Fighter Squadron, Eric Hillenbrand. He never had great ambitions. All he ever hoped for was to make a living as a regular pilot. Today he works as a flight instructor for civilian pilots. The instant he shot me, I pulled the lever. <laughs> I barely managed to escape from my plane as it burst into flames. After drifting from the blast, I landed below the round table. It was a wide open, barren wasteland. How long would I have to wait for a rescue party? Radio interference within the round table was fierce. The odds of a distress signal actually reaching anyone was low. I was at a loss for what to do. Anyway, I'd really gone out with a bang this time. I took that as a sign it was time for me to retire. But just then, I heard a roaring overhead. It was his plane. I was jealous of his calm flying form. Rather than wait for the rescue team, I began to walk toward the nearest base. I was driven by desire to get back up there and fight him again. Of course, it did take me three days to get there. When a fighter plane goes down, that's the end. It disintegrates into pieces. Incinerated beyond recognition. It's a scary thought. But it also makes you feel alive. I left the military, but I still fly that sky. But, uh... It's pretty lonely up there all by myself. I'd love to fly with him again someday. Silver Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 51st Air Division, 126th Tactical Fighter Squadron. Dietrich Kellerman. He was once the top ace at Belka and a fiery instructor at the Air Force Academy. In 1995, the Belkin Air Force sent him to the front lines to bolster troop morale. He was good. From what I'd heard about him, I thought he was still just a young mercenary. But he matured since then. He still wasn't perfect, but I could see he had come a long way towards understanding the rules of combat. What's important on the battlefield is to let go of hate, to survive, and to adhere to the rules you've set for yourself. These are the rules I've taught my students. And when I saw him, I could tell my time was done. A new generation had inherited the sky. There was no more need for an old soldier like me. Hatred cannot be the only motivation for war. It only brings about more pointless deaths. I lost most of my students. They were all my children, my flesh and blood. I will never overcome that grief. 
I'll probably never teach anyone again. Nor will I ever go up in the sky again. I have entrusted everything I know to a new generation. I'll just look on from here. Marcela Vasquez, the Espada team's number two and former member of the Sapin Air Force, 9th Air and Land Division, 11th Tactical Fighter Squadron. She is thought to be a survivor of the Coup d'etat squadron. She currently earns a living as a dancer. If the Demon Lord hadn't appeared, our lives might have been different. For me, it wasn't about flying or ideals. Most of all, it was about him, my flight lead. Our mission was to escort the heavy command cruiser that was to act as transportation for the organization. And the Demon Lord appeared, as if to block our path. I will never forget his overwhelming power. One by one, my comrades were shot down, and then the mother bird we were supposed to protect. I returned alive from that battlefield, and I returned to this city where I grew up. I left the organization, too. I never went back to the sky again. There's no meaning there now that he's gone. He died in that fight. We survived after the fight. We left our organization and returned to the ground together. But... He was heavily wounded. He soon passed away, leaving me behind. We were only able to spend a short time together in peace and quiet. We survived after the fight. We left our organization and returned to the ground together. But those whose hearts are in the sky will always return to the sky. He was one of them, and so he left, even though his wounds had yet to heal, and he died there, never to return to me. But I don't blame anyone. The regret and suffering that remained after that battle were also what he had given me. They're among the precious few things he left behind. Anthony Palmer, former lieutenant of the Ocean Air Defense Force, 8th Air Division, 32nd Tactical Fighter Squadron. He's been missing for some time, along with Captain Bristow of the same unit, since the decisive Battle of Valdrick. Captain Bristow is rumored to be one of the founding members of a world with no boundaries. Palmer's ties to the captain have led many to believe that he is a high-ranked individual within the group. He currently works for an insurance company based in Aurid, the capital city of Osea. <laughs> Demon Lord was right. Everything he touched fell apart. I thought I was watching magic. When I was in the military, they called me an ace too. I got medals for my actions on numerous battlefields. I never felt fear toward an opponent. The same went for my ideals. I wasn't afraid to take on even an entire country. But when I was fighting him, something felt different. At first, I didn't know what it was. It wasn't until I noticed my hands shaking on the flight stick that I realized. It was fear. It's embarrassing, but once I felt that, I couldn't fly anymore. I felt guilt toward my companions at the time. There's always a war somewhere. And I'm sure he's on some battlefield somewhere, fighting even now. He'll always have a place to live. Anton Kuchenko, thought to be head director of A World With No Boundaries, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 18th Air Division, 5th Tactical Fighter Squadron. In his glory days, he was a Belkin ace, and later became head of their Department of Weapons Development and Technology. But the military sent him back out on the front lines as a commander. 
In March of 1995, he suddenly disappeared along with his platoon and was never accounted for after that. The Belkin Air Force announced that he died in combat. Several months after that, his corpse was found close to the Belkin border. The whole story is still shrouded in mystery. Joshua Bristow, former captain of the Ocean Air Defense Force, 8th Air Division, 32nd Tactical Fighter Squadron. His actions during the Belkin War are surrounded in mystery, and he is rumored to be one of the founders of a world with no boundaries. His whereabouts were unknown after the decisive Battle of Valdrike, but several years later he resurfaced as a leader of a terrorist organization. Today he is serving time in prison. This darkness and that little window are my entire world now. I'm actually rather fond of it. The darkness envelops me in a borderless world. A world with no boundaries. It was not the reason we were unable to change the world. No matter what the desired outcome is, the world can still change as long as people expand their knowledge and desire change. Today's world has already changed from what it was back then. Larry Finn, also known as Solo Wing Pixie. GALM Team's number two, and member of the Ustio Air Force, 6th Air Division, 66th Air Force Unit. That's right. This man was his buddy, and his enemy. Every time I flew with him, his skill stood out. He was unstoppable. It didn't matter where the battlefield was, the man had complete trust in his own powers. He was born for battle, a demon lord who struck down all opposition. He paid no heed to the troubles of those who flew with him. He would ascertain the situation in an instant, and change the tide of battle. He was born for combat. It was no wonder they called him a demon lord. That said, it was hell trying to keep up with him. He was cool-headed and proud. A combat professional. Demon lord fit him perfectly. Maybe the man was blessed by the goddess of war. Before long, everyone had taken notice of him. More and more would show up to watch him go off on sortie. Mercenaries or maintenance crew, it didn't matter. People wanted to burn his image to their memories. Hell, they weren't the only ones. I should have died that day, but I didn't. I dragged my wounded body and reached ground zero of the nuclear detonations. barren, empty land. I felt an unbearable sadness when I witnessed that landscape. There were still people living there. They were the ones that saved me. It may be true that the world has no need of borders, but would getting rid of them really change anything? The world won't change for the better unless we trust people. Trust is vital in a peaceful world. But that will never happen. I'm still on the battlefield. Right now I'm near a border. I want to see for myself what borders really mean, and what their volition really is. I may not find what I'm looking for, but I still want to try. Anyway, that's what I've come to believe, and I think that's enough.
Will he see this video? If you do meet him, give him a message for me. Yo, buddy. Still alive? And thanks, friend. See you again. The Demon Lord of the Round Table. A warrior who soared through the Belkin War, inspiring both fear and admiration. His presence filled the skies for but a few short months before he disappeared. Apart from that, nothing is known about him. I was never able to find out what kind of a person he really was. But whenever they talked about him, they always had a slight smile on their faces. That, perhaps, may be my answer.